So there's some really strong words associated with what we're observing. Uh, and uh, of course, I've been attacked and ridiculed for even mentioning uh, the events of uh, um, the uh, German state during the 20s and 30s and 40s. Uh, um, that's, that's disallowed and, and immediately weaponized. Um, but uh, authoritarianism is authoritarianism, uh, whether it's uh, whatever other euphemisms we want to label it with in terms of the political spectrum. You know, authoritarian, man authoritarian behavior manifests um, across the political spectrum historically. And we absolutely are seeing rather rampant authoritarian behaviors in the censorship, propagandizing, um, uh, and, and retaliation against those that are so bold as to speak about uh, what they're observing. Uh, and um, this this is a, a recipe for exacerbating the human tragedy. And I, yeah. I, that's that's exactly where you're going is, and, and I don't, I've tried so hard to uh, educate people, um, highlight, uh, the work of Matthias Desmet and uh, his those that came before him uh, highlight uh, the problems of group psychology uh, that underlie the bad decision making uh, that has transpired within these small in groups. Uh, um, uh, that's well known as a problem in American foreign policy decision making and other American policy governmental policy decision making. It's called, it's referred to as group think. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a, a technical area um, and well verified. And, and it's, if you go down um, the, the checklist of, of what are the characteristics of group think, you, you just, it fits perfectly with what was observed in the White House and uh, throughout our government and throughout academe. Um, yeah. We're we're in a very dark place and I, and I really don't like to, to to focus on that, I, I think it's necessary to give people hope. But yeah. if you confront what we're encountering, uh, it's it's dark and it's getting darker. And uh, and folks like yourself and myself, this is the paradox that I first encountered in a podcast with uh, Peter McCullough and uh, Matthias Desmond. Matthias, from his studies in this area, and by the way, he has been incredibly attacked uh, you know, uh, within Bel Belgium and you know, surrounding areas where he teaches, uh, just as bad as any of us. Uh, but his point is history teaches that when these kinds of processes get going within a culture, uh, they will eventually lead to, uh, um, violence and, uh, and the out groups, if they resort to violence will be attacked quite strongly. Uh, and then eventually what will happen if this is allowed to run its course is essentially what was, uh, um, uh, you know, history records as uh, the outcome of the Jacobins in the French Revolution. They'll turn on each other and start, uh, you know, sending each other off to, to Madame Guillotine. And metaphorically, that is already happening uh, um, as, as, uh, dissenters who were formerly among the uh, in crowd, uh, the few that break away, then they get attacked. Uh, and um, Matthias's comment was that as being a, of the dissenter community, one has no choice ethically. You can't walk away. You have no ethical choice other than to continue to dissent, knowing that there's a high probability that you're going to pay an even greater price, which could include your life, not to sound dramatic. Uh, and certainly I and many others have had many death threats. But uh, if, if one doesn't do that, uh, and you're in this population of people who are, for whatever reason, not hypnotized or not captured by the dominant narrative. Um, if you don't speak out, 
the those that are so captured will go even further down that road. It's it's the center speaking out is the only thing that will keep the culture from going even deeper into uh, dysfunctional totalitarian uh, responses. And so that's the paradox. Well, you know, Philippe, when you, when I hear myself, you know, sharing this, I'm thinking by myself, for God's sake, I mean, how would this be possible? I mean, this has never happened before. How all of a sudden mankind could be facing such a disaster, you know, as a human being, I cannot accept this, right? I can only accept this as a scientist, but I cannot accept this as a, and, and you know, instinctively, you know, so, some voices tell me here, this cannot be true, this cannot happen, there must be a way out, something is, is, is going to happen to mitigate this, etc. But I can tell one thing, is that I have done my homework. I have done it in a very thorough way, very profoundly, I have collected all these pieces of the puzzle and I've put them together. And therefore, when I was telling you uh, the, the, what we're seeing right now with the, the, the surge in mortality and, and hospitalization rates and, and the type of the changes uh, in the virus and the fulminant spread of the virus, etc. These are additional pieces that because I have done my homework before, I can easily fit in. I can easily put those pieces in the right position. Those who have not been doing that homework and uh, putting the piece of the puzzle together, but were only puzzled about the evolution of the whole thing, cannot do this. So I must say I have ruled out everything else and the likelihood that all these elements, you have seen elements of biophysics, you have seen elements of immunology, you have seen elements of, of virology, of vaccinology, come together in a way that it doesn't violate any of the rules of the laws of these disciplines. Yeah, then, I mean, it cannot be otherwise. It cannot be otherwise than that is the truth. And again, if I were not 200% convinced, uh, I would not dare to show my face uh, here, right? That is, that is the level of my conviction. And I, I can share with you that I will, with family and friends, I will sit together next week uh, to see how we can prepare for this chaos that is, that is going to come. But where health authorities, you know, do as if nothing were because GN1 is not more virulent than the others, right? And it's, it's like a, a volcanologist who is trying to predict an eruption of a volcano. If he would just look at the fissures and the cracks uh, at the surface of the earth, I think the likelihood that they would be able to predict an eruption is very remote. What the right, you know, volcanologists do is that they do all kinds of examinations, gas emissions and, uh, you know, change the magnetic fields, seismographic uh, registration of earthquakes, etc., etc. And, you know, to see what is going on underneath the surface. Our health authorities and experts have only been looking at the surface, whereas the whole thing is under the surface. That is where uh, the whole thing and, and, and where the lava is, is, is rising right now, right? So that is what I mean with is that um, I consider that, you know, I have ruled out everything and that, uh, you know, even if it is a very dire message, it for me, it cannot be anything else but the truth.